Good morning, rabbit lovers. Welcome to the Happy Harvest Homestead. Today, I'm going to give you guys an update on our Angora rabbits. It's been quite a while since I've done an Angora update video. Sometimes I get so focused on making content about our meat rabbits that the other animals get kind of pushed to the side as far as video content goes. While the Angoras are sometimes in videos that are mainly about meat rabbits, I figure that they should have their own update video as well, especially since many things have changed since the last update video and we're in the beginning of a new year and I can kind of cast vision a little bit about our plans and goals and what's going to happen with the Angoras this coming year. In case some of you guys don't remember, we have two Angora rabbits, Sylvan and his daughter Jolti. Sylvan kind of sounds like silver and Jolti is a mix between, I believe it's the words golden and yellow or something like that in Russian. So I kind of have like silver and gold, Sylvan and Jolti. So I think that's kind of fun. Though you guys know I dislike housing rabbits in cages and all of my other rabbits are not in cages. I do have to keep these Angoras in cages because of their fiber. The reason I have these rabbits is for their long fiber. I harvest their fiber and spin it on a spinning wheel to make yarn and then I crochet stuff with that. Right now they are my only wool source. Down the road I want to eventually perhaps get an angora goat or sheep or something but for now we just have rabbits for fiber. Angora rabbit fiber is super long and super soft and super fine and it feels amazing but it gets tangled or matted very easily and it can get dirty especially because it's so long any like particles of hay or straw or anything get like into it and, and that makes my regular grooming sessions that much harder so I made the choice to house them in cages instead of in a colony setup where their upkeep would be way more labor intensive but as you can see well maybe you can't see as well because it's winter and I had to winterize the cages but each rabbit has three holes that are connected, so their cages are actually pretty big. So I can comfort myself with the fact that even though they do have to live in cages on wire, at least they have really big cages, so they're not stuck in a really small, tiny cube all their lives. And whenever the weather cooperates, which sometimes is not that often, we do let them exercise on our back deck whenever we're home and can keep an eye on them. So they also get the added exercise and space to run around with doing that, but mainly they do live in their cages. In the past, I've been breeding my Angora rabbits and selling the babies to make a little business and also keeping some babies. You guys will remember Tia and Cambria. They were babies I kept, and then Jolti is a baby I kept. But this year, I've decided to not breed my Angoras and sell the babies. We have a dad and his daughter, and I'm not that good at knowing what is a good Angora and what is a bad Angora. So if I line breed, then I don't really know what I'm looking for in what to keep and what not to keep. So I don't feel very comfortable selling somebody a rabbit of possibly questionable quality. But that does not mean I will not breed my Angoras. That just means I won't sell the babies. Right now, we are focusing on fiber growth and harvesting that fiber, but when the weather warms up and I need to start shaving them regularly to keep them cool over the late spring and summer, I am thinking about putting Sylvan and Jolti together, letting them live together this whole summer. If I stop focusing on fiber and instead focus on keeping them cool, too late for Sylvan to start breeding before he gets heat sterile. Which I guess I don't really know if he goes heat sterile or not, but I'm just assuming so just in case. So if he lives with Jolti the whole summer and then doesn't breed her at all because he can't or she doesn't allow him to, that will be fine. But if I start that earlier in the season before he goes heat sterile or if I let it go a little longer into the fall when the weather starts cooling off and he is not heat sterile anymore and she lets him breed her, or if over the summer he ends up not going heat sterile and she does allow him to breed her, then I will allow them to have babies 
and I would just consider their babies as meat rabbits instead of rabbits to sell. As you guys know, my entire plan for our meat rabbitry this year was completely thrown off by illness, so we have no babies and no meat. So if we can get a few angoras to butcher, that is much better than what we have right now, which is nothing. If we do have babies this year, that will mean a lot more work for me because of their fiber, especially with little babies. The first coat that an Angora rabbit gets, like its baby coat, is much more fine and softer than the adult coat. And that's really good for like using it for fiber and stuff. It's softer and better, but it also gets tangled way more easily. So that means it'll be even harder to keep them tangle free and I'll have to do regular grooming sessions or I might end up shaving them like their parents when they reach a certain age or fur length. I don't really know quite what I'll do. We'll have to see if we have babies and if we do have babies when they're born and how many there are and just deal with that when it comes. But I have decided that the benefit we're going to be getting from their meat when we butcher them is worth the extra work it'll take, especially because we have no other rabbits to butcher. And you guys know me, I don't like feeding pellets. Right now, our, our angoras get pellets because if we gave them hay, then it would get all into their fiber and make grooming them that much harder. And they don't really like eating hay anyways. But when the weather starts warming back up in the spring and things begin to grow again, then I will be transferring them to a most, if not all, plants diet, fresh plants. Fresh plants don't seem to tangle in their fiber as much as dried plants, which is hay. So if Jolti has babies, then those kits, even though they will be raised in cages, they will not be fed pellets. They will just have greens, the same as if they were just regular meat rabbits. I guess we'll have to see how exercising two rabbits plus multiple litters of kits will go if and hopefully when we have some babies. It seems like that's going to be a lot of work, bringing like eight or ten rabbits out to exercise every day. But I guess we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So this is the end of my Angora update. You guys were reminded that we actually have Angora rabbits. I know I haven't talked about them for a long while. So yes, we still have them. And we're using them for fiber right now. We're focusing on that. Then later in the year, we're going to be focusing on babies. Then as the weather starts cooling off in the fall and winter again... The plan currently is to focus back on fiber. So you've seen the rabbits, you know what's happening now, you know what's going to happen, and hopefully you've enjoyed watching their adorable cuteness. Regular rabbits are super cute, but in my opinion, super fluffy rabbits are even cuter. I can't help but be wowed every time I see Sylvan in all of his fluffy glory hopping around. I think it's so cute. Thanks for watching!